From the Samsung Production Studios in the heart of Hazleton, Pennsylvania, it's your News 13. Brought to you by SSP TV and the Standard Speaker. It was a disrespectful act, but now a local business has stepped up to try and restore the honor. Replacing the marker stolen from veterans' graves, our top story on News 13 for this Thursday. Good evening, everybody. Thank you so much for joining us. I'm Kathy Bozinski. It was simply disrespectful. Thieves raided a local cemetery and took hundreds of brass markers, which held American flags from the graves of veterans. The local VFW was struggling to find a way to replace them, but as Christina Papa explains, help has come from an unexpected place. No one knew what to do when hundreds of brass markers were stolen from the graves of veterans buried at St. Anne's Cemetery in Foster Township earlier this month. Yeah, it's a fairly sad event really that happened in Freeland to have the grave markers stolen of veterans. Anthony isn't a veteran and he doesn't have any ties to St. Anne's Cemetery, but when his employer, Burger Family Dealership, heard about the markers, they offered to help. So uh, the dealership, both the owner, the management, and the employees wanted to reach out and do something that would be a benefit to the VFW to help replace those grave markers that were stolen at the cemetery. We know what you're thinking. How could a car dealership help veterans? Well, the Burger family put a game plan together and found a way. And uh, we're ready to go to offer a 1595 oil change to the general public. They don't have to have a car that we normally sell or service. They can bring any make uh, to the dealership. The dealership is offering an oil change and oil filter replacement for a discounted price of $15.95 from 1 to 5 p.m. on Friday. All the proceeds will benefit Freeland's VFW. The mechanics here at Burger Family Dealership are expecting a big crowd tomorrow, especially considering the price of an oil change will almost be cut in half. A normal oil change is around 30 bucks, so drivers will get quite a deal. But we want something to draw a volume of people, you know, to, to make the donations uh, quite high. Burger Family will be paying out of pocket for their employees' day of work, essentially donating their mechanics time for the cause. Now employees say they're up for the challenge. It's, it's going to be definitely tough, but it'll be worth it in the end. This isn't the first time the dealership has helped out a worthy cause in the area. It is. They really have a different mind frame, I think, as far as being a family-run business. You know, you think about the community and the area and uh, they try to give back as they can. The dealership will be changing oil for a discounted price tomorrow on Friday from 1 till 5 p.m. Drivers can call the dealership to make an appointment, but walk-ins are welcome. Christina Papa, News 13, Greater Hazleton. HPD asking for your help tonight to find the woman who apparently wanted to hold up a bank yesterday afternoon. Police say that just around 3 o'clock yesterday, the supervisor at the Landmark Community Bank on South Poplar Street in Hazleton called 911 saying that somebody wearing a ski mask had just tried to enter the bank. HPD raced to the scene and saw a person matching the bank's supervisor's description running away from the area. Witnesses say the woman was Caucasian and was wearing dark clothing, including that ski mask. The suspect ran in the direction of Heights Terrace Elementary Middle School. State police and units from West Hazleton were called to assist HPD as they searched the area around the school as well as a nearby cemetery for the woman. Hazleton police say that if you know anything about the woman or the incident, call 911. A man from Schuylkill Haven was spent at least 14 years in prison for tying a man to a tree and leaving him there to die. Schuylkill County judge told 49-year-old Keith Reber that Brian Smith is dead because of his reckless and grossly negligent conduct. Judge then sentenced him to 14 to 28 years in prison. A Schuylkill County jury decided earlier that Reber was guilty of involuntary manslaughter in the death of Brian Smith of Orangsburg. Reber thought Smith was trying to steal his girlfriend, so he took Smith to a wooded area and tied him to a tree and left him there. Smith died while tied to that tree. Reber will serve his sentence in a state correctional facility. Well, first time around, the trip didn't go quite as planned, so Hazleton's chief of police reached out to some area businesses to help make a trip to the pool possible for some local day campers. They sure are. Dozens of kids from the Hazleton YMCA YWCA day camp hopped on the bus and were headed for a day of fun at the JFK pool in Pottsville. When they tried to make the day trip one month ago, one of their buses was rear-ended by a tractor trailer on Interstate 81. 
Kids were shaken up and several of the camp counselors and chaperones were injured. Now, Hazleton's police chief Frank DeAndrea worked with the law firm HGSK and Frankie's Pizzeria to help fund today's event. Frankie's donated 100 lunches for the trip and the law firm donated shirts and paid for the admission to the pool. Chief DeAndrea and his wife Sandy paid for the buses out of their own pockets so the children could finally enjoy a great day of fun in the sun. And part of their healing is taking something that was so ugly and getting them back on a bus and driving down the same road. And by the time they get to the pool, all their worries will be gone. They'll have a great day in the water. And by the time we tire them out and bring them back home, what was an ugly incident will be nothing more than a faded memory replaced by the goodness of a great day at the pool. Guess what? That's exactly what happened. Chief DeAndrea sent News 13 this photo of the whole gang hanging out by the pool just about an hour ago. Kids definitely look like they had one terrific time. Well, just a week before classes and the Tamaqua Area School Board is already dealing with controversy, but it's not about teachers, staff or any of its current students. As Matthew Petrillo tells us, it involves a former student and his use of free speech. These huge six foot letters spell out Raiders. All seven have been lodged to some trees on Stadium Hill Road, the same road that leads to the Tamaqua High School football stadium. Tamaqua resident Justin Startzel made the signs to promote the Tamaqua football team. But Startzel doesn't go to school here. He graduated back in 2009, and he never approached the school district to have the signs approved. When I saw them, I thought, you know, it's certainly a great deal of school spirit. The gentleman that, that does this, he's consistently, you know, trying to, to gain community spirit. Uh, for the school and, and most specifically for the football team and you know we have no problem with that we admire that. Kinder says the school district tried to meet with Startzel in private but that Startzel resisted. Try not to try as best we can not to have heated discussions in front of other people because emotions take over and you know perceptions are made when that's not the case. So. Now the school district says they really like these signs they say they want to keep them but that there's procedures to follow and they say that Startzel was being difficult. We wanted to make sure that our protocols were followed, and um, we had we felt like we had some resistance to doing that. And the gentleman who was doing it felt like he had resistance to putting them up. And we made efforts to try to contact him to resolve it before the the board meeting. But it seemed as though that was where um, some people wanted to have the discussion take place in, in a public setting, which you know isn't what we want. For instance, the signs are loosely bolted to trees with makeshift stabilizers that could pose safety hazards. But Wednesday night, the school board met with Startzel and decided to allow the signs. They say they hope it brings more people out to the Raiders games. Ready for a championship this year? Uh, we like as many championships as we can get, but we also, you know, our biggest priority is getting, you know, developing student athletes. And I think we do a great job of that here between our, our administrators, our teachers, our coaches, our students and our parents. Matthew Petrillo, News 13, Tamaqua. And still ahead on News 13, get ready for a nice stretch of sunshine and some great temperatures. We'll tell you all about them in News 13 weather. And students all across the region getting ready to head back to class. But now they have a non-traditional option. We'll tell you about it when News 13 continues. Another historic structure in our area appears to have its days numbered. A federal bankruptcy court approved the sale of the historic Huber Breaker in Ashley today. That sale is expected to lead to demolition of the structure and sale of the salvaged steel. The judge's ruling today should be formalized in the next couple of days. He said he found no evidence to block the sale and ended the bankruptcy case of its owner's number one contracting company. The company's creditors will be paid from the sale proceeds. Well, school is just a few days away, but there's still time to enroll in a new cyber school. It provides students with a laptop, internet, and some other goodies. But as Matthew Petrillo tells us, these online schools aren't for everybody. If you're thinking of going back to school, back to waking up early, back to not knowing what to wear, well, if your current school is just too much of a struggle or just even too easy, some are suggesting to enroll in a cyber charter school. The schools are online, and Hazleton is getting a new one for both English and Spanish-speaking students. So all their actual classes will be online. So it's interactive. They see the teacher. The teacher can see them. They can raise their hands. They can, you know, chat with their teachers. But all the content's online. But you don't have to learn alone at your house. They choose to come here. Then we also have bilingual staff or that can help them, special education teachers that can help them. So the actual content's online. But the extra support is here, physical. It's sort of like a plan. 
Now students get all of this stuff. They get a laptop, headphones, keyboards, a bag, and even a printer. And by learning these computer skills every day, the school's hoping they take that with them into the job market. And they say that's fantastic because they, need, they don't need to wake up at six o'clock in the morning. Still, there are some challenges to an online school. There isn't the same discipline like in a brick and mortar school. And students don't socialize the same they would with students online. Still, the curriculum impressed some parents. Gonna have the same behavior, probably a best behavior because there's not gonna be a lot of kids. There's gonna be like, what, mm -hmm. 13, 12 kids in, in the aisle and they're gonna be talking. I think it's a perfect one. Matthew Petrillo, News 13, Hazleton. And time now for our regional weather from the National Weather Service. Checking out the radar, we will continue to see some showers rolling through our area through the evening. But once we're clear with those, we got a super stretch of some nice weather. Our creative condition is all about a tranquil summer day. It's by Shadira Rodriguez, a student at Hazleton Elementary Middle School. She says it's a beautiful, calm summer day by the lake. And now let's take a look at News 13 weather from the National Weather Service for Greater Hazleton for tonight. Chance of showers and thunderstorms right through the evening, then showers into the overnight with a low down to 62 degrees. But for Friday, mostly sunny, high up to 77, clear at night with a low around 57. And now heading to Schuylkill County for tonight, a chance of showers and thunderstorms right through the evening, low down to 62 degrees. And for Friday, mostly sunny with a high near 80, clear at night with a low around 54. Well, looking for a day on the greens, or better yet, how about making it a golfing weekend? That may have just gotten a little bit easier thanks to one local course adding a sweets hotel. Mountain Valley Golf Course in Schuylkill County celebrated the grand opening of its first-class hotel, Mainstay Suites. The new hotel offers a great dining room and, of course, a top-rated golf course. Mainstay has amenities like free internet access, a 24-hour fitness center, and a tasty breakfast each morning. There are also plenty of tourist attractions that surround the new hotel, places like Locust Lake and even Knoebel's Amusement Park. Along with catering to golfers, it's also a great place for busy travelers. It's also bringing other people into the area, into the community. Uh, it's surprising how many people come in and out of Schuylkill County. So we've seen um, a lot of people staying here that uh, do business in the county that most people don't even realize. The new hotel also features spaces for dinners, holiday parties, and conferences. And now that they've had their grand opening, customers will be dancing through the doors of a new business in downtown Hazleton. Hazleton's mayor, along with chamber members, helped cut the ribbon this morning during the grand opening of the new Facets of Dance studio on Broad Street. The dance studio will offer several basic dance classes, including ballet, tap, jazz, and ballroom for both adults and children. The owners started renovating the building in October, but got slowed down a little bit by construction. The dance studio has been opening Vader Hazleton actually for over 20 years, but recently decided to move to a more high-profile location. Owners say downtown is the perfect spot. It is nice to be back in downtown Hazleton again. It's nice to get started again. We were off for a little while, uh, getting open again. Um, I'm pleased to be in downtown. A lot of people say, no, you know, stay away from downtown. But I think it's important that we're here, and I think it's important for the kids in the community, too. And experienced and beginning dancers are always welcome. For more info about classes, just call the number at the bottom of your screen. And let's check the winning midday lottery numbers. Good luck if you play the daily. Three, two, four. The big four, five, seven, seven, four. Quinto, nine, six, seven, two, two. And the treasure hunt, one, three, seven, fourteen, twenty-eight. Hope you won. Good evening, everyone, and here's tonight's Talk of the Town report. Three quick announcements for this evening. First, the Holy Door Mission Friary will be holding a blue mask to honor firefighters and emergency personnel that risk their lives every day. The service will be held Sunday, August 25th at 4 p.m. For more info, please call 570-788-1212, extension 400. Next announcement, the 2013 Shenandoah Heritage Day and Parade of Nations will be held Saturday, August 24th, with the parade starting at 10 a.m. Activities continue throughout the day at the park, including food, music, artisans, and vendors. For more info, please call 570-462-2060. And finally, the Schuylkill United Way will be holding their county kickoff breakfast Friday, September 6th at 8 a.m. The event will be held at PSU Schuylkill Health and Wellness Building. For more information, please call 570-622-6421. At tonight's Talk of the Town. News 13 would like to send sincere condolences to the family and friends of these recently departed. Dorothy Shar of Hazleton, no services are planned. The Hazel Chapel of the Crofton Hughes Funeral Home is assisting the family with the arrangements. Margaret Sirock of Freeland, 
Funeral is Friday at 9.30 a.m. from the McHugh Wilczek Funeral Home. Mass will be held Friday at 10 a.m. in the Immaculate Conception Parish at St. Anne's Church. Friends may call Thursday from 6 to 8 p.m. Florence C. Wojcik of Sugarloaf. Mass is Friday at 10.30 a.m. in the Holy Name of Jesus Parish at Transfiguration Church. Friends may call Friday from 9.30 to 10.30 a.m. The Hillary J. Bonin Funeral Home is assisting the family. Teodoro Ravina of Weatherwood. Memorial Mass is Friday at 6.30 p.m. in the Holy Annunciation Parish at the Church of St. Gabriel. The Cropton Hughes Funeral Home assisted the family with the arrangements. Margaret M. Whitehair of Sugarloaf. Funeral is Saturday at 11 a.m. in the Black Creek United Methodist Church. Friends may call Saturday from 10 a.m. until the time of service. The Harmon Funeral Home is assisting the family with the arrangements. Leona M. Roman of Hazel Township. Memorial Mass will be held at a later date. The Joseph A. Moran Funeral Home is in charge of arrangements. And Daniel J. Carvino, formerly of Berwick. Mass is Friday at 11.30 a.m. at the St. Joseph's Roman Catholic Church. Friends may call Friday from 10.30 a.m. until the time of service. Arrangements are under the direction of the James L. Hinckley Funeral Home. Tonight's obituaries have been brought to you by the Smilax Floral Shop located on 15th Street in Hazleton. For delivery to all local funeral homes, call 570-454-0111. And by Doves of White, serving Schuylkill and surrounding counties, 570-205-1597. SSP TV Sports on News 13. It should come with no surprise that Derek Jeter is our top story here on News 13 Sports. Jeter will be joining the Rail Riders tonight to rehab from a strained calf a few weeks ago. Since then, Jeter has been out of the lineup. Jeter will return tonight and play this 7.05 game facing the Pawtucket Red Sox. Now, obviously, this won't be Jeter's first time back in Scranton. He played there from July 6th through the 10th and went one for nine with four walks during his four-game stint with the team. Jeter is a career 313 hitter and is a 13-time All-Star. The Rail Riders have announced they'll open the gates 15 minutes earlier and will have extra security and staff around the ballpark. Staying put in AAA, let's take a look at what's going on tonight. The Iron Pigs will get back in action after having a few nights off. They take on Buffalo. The Indians and Russ Kanzer are also back in action against Rochester. 7-15 start. Kanzer is looking to get back onto the field after missing the past few games. Only one game of relevance taking place yesterday in the minors. The Rail Riders got doubled up by the Pawtucket Sox. 6-3, Brett Marshall of Scranton taking the loss on the mound. The MLB playoff race is starting to get hotter, and especially in the AL East. Even with the Rays losing and the Red Sox picking up a win, it's still tight. The Red Sox defeated the Giants 12-1, and the Rays fell victim to a 4-2 defeat against the O's. Even surrendering the win, Joe Madden's Rays are still only one game behind Boston for the AL East lead. Another team who has been getting hot is the Yankees. Alfonso Soriano hit the go-ahead two-run home run, giving the Yankees the 4-2 victory. Other game notes to go along in this one, Ichiro Suzuki picked up his 4,000th career hit as a professional ball player. That's a lot of hits. Some other quick notes and scores around the diamond last night. The Padres defeated the Pirates 2-1 on the West Coast, and the Phillies beat the Rockies 4-3. Cliff Lee, seven innings, two runs in a no decision. Let's take a peep at what's going on tonight revolving around the majors. Boston and the Rays have the day off. The Yankees and Blue Jays are in an afternoon matinee, but nevertheless, the Phillies still battling the Rockies, 7.05 start, and the Pirates move on from the Padres still staying on the West Coast. They transition to San Fran and take on the Giants. It's almost that time of year when we start getting our local high school sports back, and that time is, well, it's soon. They're already playing tennis, and we're Got some action going on today, and they're already in progress. The Hazleton girls tennis team will be at Wright Township Park in Mountaintop when they match up against Crestwood. Match time started at 4.15. Some tennis scores from Tuesday. Yes, a bit delayed, but nonetheless, the Cougars were swept 5-0 against Coughlin. Check back tomorrow. We'll have some of their video matchup against the Comets. Also, something to keep an eye out for, and we'll mention it tomorrow as well, but high school football is almost back in full swing. Some scrimmages. Will be going on tomorrow, and the Cougars will face their first opponent of the year. It will be an exhibition-style game. Nevertheless, they'll be paired up against Bangor Area High School. They're at Hazleton for a 6 p.m. start at Harmon Geis. More football action unfolding tonight in the NFL. It's the third game, which means the stars are going to be out. The Lions play host to Tom Brady. A uh, little side note from this one, as Lions cornerback Lewis Delham, when talking about Tom Brady, said, quote-unquote, that dude is a god. So already respect handed out to Brady. And then the Panthers are at home versus Baltimore. That's all I got for sports. Enjoy the beautiful day. 
Tonight Sports is brought to you by Mountain Speedway. Here's a look at this weekend's action. It's going to be busy. The racing will begin at 6, so plenty of action this Saturday. Just $10 for grandstand admission. Kids under 10 are free, and if you're active military or a senior, you get a $2 discount. There's the website and the phone numbers. You can call them and get all the information on the excitement of racing down at Mountain Speedway. We're giving away two grandstand admission tickets to this weekend's race. Call us right now, 459-9813. And if you're the third caller, you can claim your tickets at the race with proper ID. Hey, that's a pretty interesting ticket. And here's what our media partner, The Standard Speaker, is working on for tomorrow's edition. An update on the Broad Street Reconstruction Project as it relates to Fun Fest. You can read all about it in the Friday edition of The Standard Speaker. Plenty more news and information headed your way on News 13. A story of a school spirit turns into a campus controversy in one local school district. That story and much more news when The 13 Crew comes right back.